Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is called Dragging Mason County, and it is by Curtis Campbell. So Mason County is never defined as a specific location. It's really meant to be a small town that could be anywhere. And in the small town in this book of Mason County, we encounter Peter and his best friend Alan, and they are two of only a very small number of gay teens in their high school and in their county, really, that they know of. They are best, best friends, despite being wildly different. Peter is very reserved. He keeps to himself. He feels like his strategy right now in this small town is to keep his head down till he can leave. He even says, I will avoid being notable, significant, or otherwise remarkable in any way. Being gay in Mason County is enough of a spotlight, which is why I do my best to keep my head down and avoid the mockery that is built into the gay teen in a small town experience. Alan, on the other hand, is very different from this. He does not keep his head down. He wears what he likes. In the beginning of the book, he has chosen to wear a different color every day of the week. His week-long self-made rainbow includes like a completely green outfit or a completely orange outfit. He doesn't really care how ridiculous other people think he looks. There is a boy in their school named Bryson Dallas who is also gay and he is very much revered. He's kind of got the perfect body. He's very attractive and he has this best friend, this girl named Chrissy, and they make a lot of fun of Alan for a lot of things. And Alan just takes it good-naturedly. They're making fun of these rainbow outfits and Peter snaps. And this is something that you realize that Peter does. He keeps his head down, but it all kind of boils up inside him. He just has these outbursts and ends up saying these really mean, horrible things, which are not always wrong, but it just kind of kills the moment and it makes it into a thing and it creates problems and it creates rivalries. Ellen has been exploring drag. His drag name is Aggie Culture. And somehow he and Peter sort of end up pledging to hold the first ever drag show in Mason County. Peter's going to be the producer, Aggie Culture's going to be in the show, and she's going to round up other people who are involved in drag that she knows, and they're going to work on putting this on in this town that will not necessarily receive it well. Part of what motivates Alan and Peter to get into this is this cute guy they see working at their equivalent of Dairy Queen named Lorne and they both sort of immediately are attractive to him but Alan who has the bigger personality thinks that he is the only one who is this is something that you learn about Alan he and Peter are very good friends but Alan's life is very much about Alan and it's full of drama and a lot of what Peter does revolves around Alan's son the two of them do not communicate well about this or about other resentments that they might be harboring towards each other. So the book is building towards this drag extravaganza and there are ups and downs in getting there. There are just some discoveries made about Lorne, this person that they both have crushes on. There are a lot of stories of different people's self-explorations in this book. Characters who were not kind in the beginning, we learn more about them and realize why that might be. And when people start talking to each other individually and digging a little deeper, they learn that they might not be so at odds. But all of these things are happening throughout the whole story. There's definitely a lot of tension in the queer social group and there's tension in the social group at large. There are some other people who come on board to do this drag extravaganza and there is tension between them as well. They're not always sure that Peter is the best producer for them because Peter, in part of his keeping his head down, is made very uncomfortable by anything that he views to be flamboyant or showy. And this flamboyance and showiness is the nature of drag. He calls himself Dragnostic. And so he has a lot of stumbles 
a lot of things to get through in order to get this show produced. Peter might not be doing it for the right reasons initially. He might be doing it to get the attention of Lorne and to seem like he's more involved in the queer social scene than he is. Part of the coming of age-ness of this book is Peter starting to look outside of himself and see why something like this drag show could maybe be meaningful. So this is a very small town, any small, small town USA. And there are a lot of people in the town who are homophobic, who are transphobic. There's even a little bit of threatened violence against some of the queer characters. And there's even internalized homophobia. But Curtis Campbell also has the ability to write a really funny story. The story is so engaging for a lot of reasons. It's a great story about all these wonderful characters and about some really universal teenage experiences and then some unique experiences that they're all having. But it's also really, really funny. Even when Peter is being so sharp and acerbic, he is funny. Alan is funny. The other drag queens are funny and they're funny as a group because they have a lot of verbal sparring but they're also very supportive of each other. And then there's the other part of the small town that really does raise a lot of those heavier issues. And I don't want to spoil too much about what happens as they get closer to this drag extravaganza, whether or not they're able to pull it off. But I will say that there is this sort of protest scene between some really small-minded, really conservative people and a bunch of people who are involved in a drag show. And even that scene, it's serious, but it's done with a certain amount of humor. It's so well described that even the way the standoff happens is somewhat humorous. There are so many things I really liked about this book. It was just thoroughly enjoyable to read and I, I loved the community, but I also enjoyed the fact that there were a lot of characters in this book who were not perfect, who were deeply flawed at times, and at times reading it I would even get frustrated with them, but I think that that's a mark of really, really well-developed characters because I really cared about them and I felt like I knew a lot about them. I saw a brief video with the author where he was saying that he started writing this book. It was published in 2023, but he started writing it in 2020 when drag sort of disappeared, a lot of things disappeared. He started exploring his own drag artistry, is what he said, and then he decided to start writing this book about discovering yourself through drag. He has a background in theater, but he always felt like he had a book in him, and with so much of the theater world closing down, it seemed like a good time to start. I'm so glad that he did. He did such a good job of addressing the transphobia and the queerphobia that can happen in a small town and the backlash against it. He really faces these hard things head on, but the book is also very hopeful. And it shows what happens when you just sort of forget about all the noise around you, the societal noise and what everyone else is saying, and you just forge ahead and you do what's important to you. So I would highly recommend that you read Dragging Mason County by Curtis Campbell. Thank you for joining me.